So, Nick, if you want to say something first up. Yeah, uh, obviously, extremely disappointed. Um, you know, I, I know you guys will all, all be wondering, you know, what's going on. So, my physio, Will, he has been with me throughout my career and he's been monitoring me pretty closely the last week and he's going to give you more of the details on, on what's kind of going on. And obviously, I'm just exhausted from everything and, you know, obviously pretty brutal. Um, in one of the most important tournaments of my career and so it hasn't been easy at all. Yeah, it, it has been a pr pretty interrupted and difficult lead into the Australian Open, unfortunately. And uh, during the last week or so, Nick's experienced some, some discomfort in his knee and routine MRI just to make sure everything was okay. There, there's a, a parameniscal cyst growing in his lateral meniscus, which is a result of a small tear in his lateral meniscus. It's not a significant injury in the sense that it's going to be career threatening or anything like that. It was. Even at that stage, it was still worth persevering to see if we could do anything to get him back on court. And to Nick's credit, he did try everything to the point even last week he was having a, a procedure called a fenestration and drainage where they use a syringe to try and drain the, the cyst, which Nick has some pretty gruesome photos of. I'm sure he'll probably share them later. Um, and a, any amount of injections that he could try and get in his knee without causing long-term damage. Um, and we, we came to Melbourne with the hope that there might be some, some pressure relieved from that procedure and he'd have some relief and be able to get up to a level that he was comfortable to compete. Um, we used the, 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 match, the, the charity event against Novak as a gauge to see if he could compete at that highest level. Um, he didn't pull up great and he still tried to give himself every chance, every chance in the following days to have subsequent training, but it was clear that with each passing session that he was getting sore and sore. So, um, I think we've made the sensible decision to withdraw him because at this stage he wants to feel mentally comfortable that he can go seven matches, he can go the distance and he needs to be able to do potentially seven three-hour matches. Getting on the court simply wasn't enough for him. So the situation now is which we wanted to prevent him from having further injury or making that injury worse. Um, so now he'll, he'll go back to, to Canberra uh, at the end of the week, he'll have an an arthroscopic procedure to, to clean up his lateral meniscus and remove the paralabal cyst. And then from there, it's, it's a relatively straightforward recovery through February for him and very realistic to be back on the court for Indian Wells. So it, it won't interrupt his year tremendously, despite the fact it's a great disappointment to, to withdraw from the Australian Open home slam. But the, the prognosis is good and it, he'll be fine and we just go back to work and make sure everything's fine for him and we go again. We'll open up to a few questions. Please raise your hand and introduce yourself. Yeah. David from uh, Fox Sports. I know this might be a really simple question, but how are you at the moment? Nick? Yeah, obviously a, a mixture of emotions. Um, you know, I guess after the US, it always goes back to the last Grand Slam I played was the US Open, and obviously extremely hard. I was extremely hard on myself after um, that loss in the quarterfinals. Obviously, thinking that I could win it from there on, and, and obviously just had. Oz Open was on the back of my mind from that day forth as soon as I got off the court against Kachanov and I, I always wanted to just do everything right and, and, and train right, tick every box and just be ready for the Oz Open and obviously this coming around is just bad timing. Um, but that's life, you know, injuries are part of the sport. Um, I guess I can draw some, you know, inspiration from someone like Thanasi who's had a bunch of injuries and, and has bounced back. So look, I'm, I'm, I'm not doubting that I'll be back to my full strength and playing the tennis I was playing um, prior to this event. So, yeah, it's, I'm devastated, obviously. It's like it's my home tournament. Um, I've had some great memories here, obviously, last year, winning the title in doubles and playing the best tennis of my life, probably, and, and going, into, one of, going to, into this event as one of the favourites. It's brutal. But, you know, all I can do now is just look forward, do what I need to do, and just come back. Nine Radio, Nick. First to you. What did it? What does it feel like when you're playing? Is it just pain? Is it restricted movement? And to, to your physio, if Nick had continued to play, would there have been long-term damage? Um, well, I guess you can make everything worse. Um, you, um, you tell him how it felt. I'll yeah, it, it doesn't. It doesn't feel good. Um, if like constant, you know, when I finish a session or finish a match, it's just constant throbbing. I've barely had a good night's sleep the last four or five night, four or five nights. Honestly, it's just been throbbing. Um, you know, it's an impact. So every time I land on serve or push off my serve, you know, there's like the little you can see on the side of my knees like a little lump. So that that lump will just eventually just get bigger and bigger. And there's pressure in my knee. Obviously, hinders my movement. 
Um, so yeah, the only real way you can get rid of it is, is to open it up and, and, and just get rid of it. Yeah. In terms of making it worse, there's, it absolutely could get worse. The, the very small tear that he has in his meniscus could turn into a much more complicated one and then he would end up losing a large chunk of his meniscus, which would affect his long-term prognosis. And then playing with pain and compensations is always a problem. You have to play at the highest level with some sort of pain at times. It's not possible to compete all the time at 100% fitness, but when you have significant pain and it alters how your muscles work, you can definitely cause problems, and particularly in around the back of the knee if your hamstrings aren't firing. My concern would be that he could tear his ACL or do something that would be career-altering. So to lose a grand slam is a step backwards, but to make sure he doesn't do something more significant is far more sensible. No, it, well, there, the Baker cyst is something that ha goes out the back of the knee. This is going more out the side of the knee. It's, it's, a, it's a paramenisical cyst and it's sort of right in the way when he bends his knee. The, the Baker cyst is more out the back. It, it's very similar. Is it caused by anything in particular? It's what the tear in the meniscus which opens up the hole which then the fluid can extrude into. Yeah. Nick, did you, I guess, wait as long as you could just to see if there's any chance that you could? Definitely. I got off the court yesterday and um, was dealing with it and we were going to make a call then and I was like, you know, I've, I've worked so hard to put myself in the position, you know, to be, you know, I was ranked outside the 100, you know, a year ago and now I've had the year I had last year and back inside, you know, the 20 being seated at a Grand Slam, you know, feeling as good as I'm feeling and, and playing the way I'm feeling. Yeah, I wanted to give myself a chance. Like... You know, it was probably, I had some hope, but, you know, after today I hit with Thanasi and someone who's playing the way he's playing and he pushed me around the court a little bit and, you know, that was more of a realistic type, you know, a hit of the intensity that was coming. So I just, it was easier to make the call today. Last two questions, please, Simon and Mark. Uh, Nick, you, you mentioned the other day about the stresses involved in building towards this Grand Slam in particular. How, how was it extra stressful knowing that you had you know, issues with your knee and trying to get ready. And... Yeah, definitely. Um, there's always outside outside noise, um, especially with me, like, you know, seeing people or past players saying, oh, you know, he's doing his own thing. Like, I'm dealing with my problems. And, you know, this was something that I was just dealing with as well, as managing expectation, trying to get my body right, trying to get feel, trying to feel good about my game. There was just so many things that I was dealing with. And, um, you know, I have a close-knit team and we had a very good system going. And, you know, the last two Grand Slams I've played, I've, I've made a final of Wimbledon and quarterfinals of the US Open. So we, we, wanted to, we, we felt like we had a genuine chance of winning an event, winning a Grand Slam and asking the questions. So, yeah, we were dealing with a lot. Um, but we have a good system in place and, you know, we came to this decision together. It was mainly driven by me, but I have their support and we feel like we're making the right decision. But, yeah, we've, players have no idea what, what I deal with, that's for sure. Last one, Mark. Yeah, I'm really sorry to give the news, Nick. Um, Will, when you touch on the fact the cyst came about because of the tear, apologies if you've already gone over this, but when did it happen? What caused it? And sort of how long have you known about it? It's impossible to say exactly when it happened. All we can go off is when Nick started to feel symptoms. And certainly in the last fortnight, he started to describe discomfort in his knee. And if it's not something that responds to treatment, particularly as an athlete of his level, you don't leave it for very long, which hence the MRI and finding the cyst. So th those things can exist for some time and be quite happily not a problem, but it's when they start to become bigger that they become a problem, and that's what was happening in this situation. It's gotten quite big, which is hence why they tried to drain it. So it's only in the last fortnight it's become a real problem. Okay, thank you very much.